Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to essentially set up Bloodhound and how to enumerate the Active Directory domain so that you're able to open up attack paths that you wouldn't be able to see otherwise. And I'm going to be doing this in the video you're about to see. So please enjoy. So let's use net exact like so. Remove all of this because we don't need to parse the user. Bloodhound operates over the LDAP protocol. And now we can do like so. So it will use these axes to essentially grab all of the the data from LDAP queries of the entire domain, and it will help us visualize it, right? That's pretty much what Bloodhound does. And then it will ingest all of the data that we have inside the SIP. And, um, and yeah. So the data is um, now there. We can now copy this data and then move it to temp so that when we open up Bloodhound, we can actually open it in the browser without having to run the browser session as root. So let me just get the, all of this ready. And once it's properly up and ready, just like that, we can now open up Bloodhound. What am I doing? Uh, we, it's oh, <laughs> It should be at localhost 8080 when it's up, but uh, it takes a little bit of time, even though these logs are showing. So maybe if I try again now, there we go. So the default username is admin, and then you'll be getting those credentials right there, which you will have to change. So let me change them. So let us ingest the data that we just got with NetExec. They are in temp, like so. Let me upload them and be right back when they are done. So now the data is ingested. So there we go. So the first thing that I like to do is that I like to go to the user that we have access to. In this case, it is Judy. And then simply just mark Judy as owned. There we go. And I like to go to Cypher Chorus. These are dangerous permissions. So these are saying these are normal groups to have that. Kerberos interactions, Azure Prost, we won't see any, and we will see one Kerberosable user, which we did not manage to crack the hash of. So the next thing that I like to do is that I like to check the domain admins and the, the shortest path from owned objects. And then after that, I like to manually just go through all the users and look at their, their outbound rights. So let's see. So far, this looks promising. So let's see. Yes. Okay. So these are not just random groups she's a member of. These are groups she's not really a part of yet, but she has um, right owner over the management group. And this group has generic right over this management service user. And that user has generic all over certificate operator. Now, that looks very, very, very promising because if you remember in our output earlier, we had a object, whether it's a group or user, it's probably a user called operator uh, CA, certificate authority probably, as a part of the certificate theorem with the template name cert certified authentication, which can do perform client authentication and server authentication, but yeah. So that looks very, very good. Now, we don't know if it's guaranteed you're going to be the same user. Uh, operator CA. It's not the same as CA operator, which is a bit strange. We can see if there is operator. Okay, there, there we go. So it seems that the, uh, the certified, no, it seems that the certify tool is looking at the display name, uh, operator CA, when it's doing this form of output. So that's awesome. So 
that's awesome, awesome, awesome. So the goal from here should be decent to clear. It's to get to this user right here and Bloodhound is feeding us a path to do so. So that's awesome. So let us simply just go from a person we already have access to and then let's work us all the way to here. And then after that, after we manage to hopefully get access to this user, we can likely perform some attacks using uh, Certify, at least that it seems very, very likely so far. So you saw how likely or you saw how useful that one liner was earlier, right? Um, where we saw all of the templates, but yeah, good stuff. So we have right owner over this group. So let us just work us, uh, work us up. So to change the ownership of the object, you may use impact as owner edit example. So again, yeah, we can essentially grant ourselves Judith. We can grant ourselves as the owner of this group right here. And then after that, we can add ourselves to this group after we have made ourselves the owner of the group. So we give ourselves the permissions. Verify that the user was successfully, and then we can verify that that actually happened. And then we are essentially part of this group. And then we can work our way to the management service user. So right, let us attempt that. So we go to Linux abuse because I don't have a shell on Windows and if you can do it on Linux, then why not? Now this tool is a part of the impact suites. So we can do like so. The attacker in this scenario is going to be the... The Judith Mater. And the victim in this scenario is going to be the management. Or the target father management so the domain is certified the attack the box the user whoops the user is going to be judith that made her like so and then password will be judith09 let us attempt that owner Unrecognized argument. Okay, it's new honor, it seems like. Mm. Yes, let's try that. So let's just try with new honor like so. That worked well. We can simply add the MD notes as we go. Then the next step is to now that we have made ourselves the owner of the group, is to add ourselves to the to the group. So we can use, let's say, yeah. So we have to give us the rights, even though we are the owner of the group. We don't have the rights to do so yet, which is a bit funny, but. Let's see. Impact at Dicol edits action right. Right. Would be right members. And then the principal will be Judith Mater. <laughs> the target. That's him. The target distinguished name will probably be this. And then it wants the domain, controlled user, and a password. So I believe this looks correct. Let's attempt this. That also worked well. So now we gave ourselves the correct rights to be able to perform this. 
And now, let us just add ourselves to the actual group. So the target group will be management. So the group and a target user, yes, that she will be the domain controlled user. All right, so. Certified hack the box. Judith Mater. And a Judith 09. And then this is the main controller. So we can just put the IP like so. That seems to work as well. And then we can do this to verify that it worked. So members. Target group like so. Let's try that. And there we go. So now we see that the Judith is a part of this group. Awesome. So now we've essentially gotten one step closer. We have now been able to move from Judith into this group. And now we can look at this right because we're now a part of the management group. So now we can try to pivot into the management service user. So let's once again. Um, so this is essentially all happening because of the outbound object control, right? So you can see that the management has a outbound object control as a generic right for mission over this object called management service. But yeah, let's look at the generic right. So we can either perform a targeted Kerberos on the management service. Now, if I remember correctly, we already have a hash for the management service. Yes. So that's not going to be too useful. But we can, however, perform an attack called Shadow Credentials. Now, you can use PyWhisker. But there is also a way you can do it with uh, Certify, which is uh, more convenient. So let's see. Shadow Credentials. Certify. There we go. Something like this. So, the account in this scenario will be the management service, I believe, and a password for the user we can have control over will be Judith, here 9. And uncertified dot hacked box. Let's attempt this. And it's trying to get the TGT. And then from here we'll be able to get the empty hash if this is successful, which it seems like it will be. We can use something like the Pi Whisker as well, suggested. It just takes a lot longer and it's more convoluted. And um, this is just a lot simpler. Successful restore the old key. Anti hash, but it gives nothing. And the reason for it is because this is happening over the Kerberos protocol, and there's a clock skew error, <laughs> which is a classic. So, simplest way is just to go to, let's say, there we go again. Our date and Target like so. You will try to synchronize with the target clock. And let's try again. And 
And there we go. So this is the NT hash of this user. So this is awesome. So now we have already successfully pivoted from the Judith into the user called management and from the management abusing the rights over the management service user. And we have now been able to use a shadow credential attack to be able to get the hash, the empty hash of this user, right? Because we couldn't crack the KRB TGT Kerberos hash, but this hash will be able to perform attacks like pass the hash and actually just directly authenticate. So we can look on Bloodhound to see if this management user can um, authenticate. Okay. So it is not in the administrator group, like a local administrator. So I don't think like SMB will give us a shell. RDP, I don't even think is open. Can double check. 3389, it's not open. But we do see that 5985 is open, which is Venerum. And this user is part of the remote management users. So I do believe that we can get a shell um, with this user. So we can attempt that. Now, I don't think it's actually the path, even though we can do it, because the... Um, because this is the other user that it leads to. Let's see. The CA operator. But we can just see if it works. And I will try this path first. And um, and if it doesn't lead anywhere useful, then I will definitely try to prebask this uh, machine right there. So management service. And then the hash will be the... Whoops. Management service. And then the hash will be this. Huh? This should work. Yep. So now we have a show. Now, if you enjoy how I teach and you enjoy this video and you want to take the OCP, then what are you doing not being in this course? It's over 15 hours long and it covers everything that you need. If you're only watching the videos on YouTube, you're missing out a lot because it's over 15 hours of content. You will get access to the VIP section on Discord where you can ask me any questions and you can study alongside all the other students in our course right now. You will also get access to this checklist right here, which will cover at least 95% plus of all the attacks and all the techniques that you need to know for every single section. Not only initial access, but AD, pivoting, Linux, and Windows privilege escalation. And the goal for you is to reach proficient or at least basic competence on all of them. That's one of the things. We also have this entire roadmap right here, where there's a bunch of action steps and a bunch of cheat sheets inside all of these hyperlinks that I can't show you in this video, but once you have completed all of them, you know for a fact that you will be ready to get into the OCP exams and absolutely crush it. If that sounds interesting to you, to get all of this in 15 hour plus of <laughs> video footage from someone who has OCP, who explains different attacks and techniques and methodologies, it's going to be invaluable to you. Now, some people are confused what they offer. If you're interested in the notes, these are the notes that you will constantly see me use in the videos, right? They're pretty much recommended to go hand in hand with the course, and I use them constantly in the course itself, right? So I think you'll find it extremely useful. That's also why we have the third offer, which is the bundle, where you can buy both of these together for a discount. I hope that clarifies things. Best of luck on your OCP journey. I really hope this will be massively useful to you. I'll see you in the next video.